Hey everyone, it's David Sirota. So that big story about Donald Trump Jr. and Ivanka Trump uh, not being prosecuted for allegedly misleading investors. That was the big story last week from ProPublica, WNYC, and The New Yorker. The story was that there were allegations uh, and concerns that the Trump children in running a piece of the Trump empire uh, had misled investors in a real estate project, the Trump Soho project, uh, and that the Manhattan DA looked into the situation, conducted an investigation into the situation, and ultimately decided not to prosecute the Trump kids. What wasn't mentioned, but is important context for all of this, is Donald Trump's own record on issues dealing uh, with investors and whether investors are misled. We reported a story at International Business Times a few months ago that's really important context for this. It was about how Donald Trump himself played a pivotal role in creating the national legal doctrine that helps financial firms fend off allegations that they have misled investors. It was a big case uh, in the early 1990s surrounding the Trump Taj Mahal project uh, in Atlantic City. Uh, basically what happened was Trump put out investment prospectuses pitching investors on investing in the project uh, and then the project promptly went bankrupt. Uh, and the investors uh, went to court against Trump, saying that they were misled. A and Trump, in, his, in defending himself, eventually ended up having a case that became one of the key pillars of a doctrine, a national legal doctrine, that is now used uh, f by Wall Street firms and investment firms to basically quash cases in which investors say they've been misled. So, so let me give you some details on this story. Uh, bond prospectuses that we obtained uh, show that Trump in 1988 pitched potential investors on his plan to build a colossus of, quote, luxurious grandeur in an East Indian motif. The prospectuses said uh, that the new project, this Taj Mahal project, uh, would draw, quote, high-end gaming patrons with a, quote, luxurious environment and provide event facilities that would give the Taj, quote, an added ability to attract customers that most other casino hotels in Atlantic City do not have. That's a direct quote from the prospectus. But soon after those bonds sold, and the bonds promoting the, the business opportunity of the Taj Mahal, soon after those bonds sold, Trump quickly declared bankruptcy. And investors argued that in order to entice them, Trump had basically overstated his net worth omitted key cautionary information about the project and how expensive it was, and used fantastical revenue estimates, a situation that they said set them up to basically get ripped off. Now what's interesting is, so they went into court and they you know, sued Trump, and what Trump's legal team did, it didn't explicitly challenge the plaintiff's allegations that his prospectuses contained any misleading information. Instead, Trump's lawyers argued that the cautionary language in the prospectus was so complete and repetitive, so obvious and well-designed, that it couldn't have misled investors. Basically, and what ended up happening was that the court ruled with Trump, and the judge in the time said, quote, cautionary language, if sufficient, renders the alleged omissions or misrepresentations immaterial as a matter of law. Now let me translate that for you. What ended up happening with this, what became known as the bespeaks caution doctrine, that's the legal doctrine that Donald Trump himself helped create. What it basically did was say that you can say all sorts of things to investors in these documents pitching them on your investment. And you potentially, at least critics of this say, you can potentially even say things that are not true as long as you include fine print in the prospectus that says, hey, you know, basically everything you've heard here is, is uh, prospective, it's speculative, uh, and it may not come true, it may not even be true, the things that we're, that we're necessarily saying now. So in other words, Donald Trump created a doctrine that essentially says that boilerplate fine print in these documents uh, can protect financial firms uh, when investors say, hey, look, here are a bunch of things you pitched me on that 
weren't true or you knew not to be true or were, you knew were completely unrealistic. And this goes back to the story that, that we learned about this week, which was that, which was that you know, the, the Trump kids, uh, there were allegations that they had misled investors. Now, now we haven't seen the bond prospectuses or the, or the, the direct documents from that. But the point here is, is that Donald Trump himself, his, his business, especially his, the real estate part of his business uh, in the late 80s and early 1990s, he basically pioneered a technique by which he can use fine print to, to make it harder for his potential business partners, aka his investors, uh, to make it harder for them to say, here's all the ways that you, you misled me and, and I deserve remuneration. He helped create a national legal doctrine that now the financial industry and the investment industry uh, now relies on, this bespeaks caution doctrine, that the industry relies on now, uh, in the face of uh, consumer lawsuits, class action lawsuits, and investor lawsuits. So it's important to understand that this kind of finagling and this kind of gray area and the, the pitching of investments uh, and the, the, the puffing up of these investments, uh, Trump himself uh, helped create uh, all of the legal architecture that allows fine print to be used uh, to protect uh, the very rich, the very powerful, the people who run the entire investment industry.